The guys are going to bring something up on the screen because we've been talking about cruising with the king. And I want to, I want to talk about this whole deal. And I've got a couple of clips here you'll love to see. See, life isn't always cruisy. I know that because I grew up in a home where there was a lot of violence and there was alcohol and things like that that just didn't go down too good for me. Messed me up with school, did all sorts of crazy things to my mind. Life isn't always cruisy. And we often, we often try to make life cruisy. The other night I was driving down the street, some of the guys were in my van and I went across the road and uh, I ran out of a warrant, but I had booked in an A, you know. And, uh, and the engine stalled just as I was taking off from the corner and I was going, and there was five guys from the young, young people who are amongst here. And as soon as it stalled, they are laughing at me. So I put my foot in the accelerator and I roared around the corner and took off from this car and just got clear, safely, but just got clear. You know what happened? You know what happened? This is what happened. The car I'd gone in front of, red and blue, red and blue, red and blue. <laughs> you know what that means, eh? <laughs> fortunately, fortunately, I was all right, and uh, they were really good to us. But you see, we often try to make life cruisy, but it ain't quite what we think it's going to be. And we sometimes we just get it all wrong. We get it all wrong. You guys have been awesome tonight. And, and I want us to think about this. You see... Guys think they've got it all together with their vehicles, but here's the latest. Here's the latest. The guys are going to drop the lights a bit for me. Here's the latest for girls. Here we go. See, we guys think we got it together. The girls are one up on us. You don't see their cars. They keep them in their handbags. What else are they going to keep there? See, we try to make life cruisy. What about this guy? This guy here, he was the, the king of what? Rock and roll. We all knew him. All his moves that he did and all the rest of it, I wouldn't even try to mimic them because most of them are too crude. But Elvis was considered to be the king so much so, you know there's literally thousands and thousands and thousands that have tried to duplicate him. And they all dress in this swanky clothing with all the shiny bits and a bit of bling and all the rest all over the place. Elvis was really the king of bling. All those sort of things. But I bet you, you wouldn't have thought this about Elvis, that he'd end up being considered to be a mug. There he is. There he goes. See, the king, people trying to keep him alive. Stories have gone around that he's still alive. Now, they're still trying to keep him alive. Uh, they're still trying to do it all. They're still trying to do the cool moves and all the, all the stuff, you know. And some of you guys do it better than him, I think. I reckon tonight, don't you? Oh, come on, give the guys a hand that gave it a try tonight. Come on. <laughs> then there's another king. Another king you're familiar with, this one here. Some of you, when it first came out, you were just little guys. <laughs> you know, the Lion King, most of you didn't see Lion King 2, or if you did, you had to get a video for it. The guys told me it was never on the movies. But the Lion King continues the saga of Simba as he teaches his daughter Ky Kyra the meaning of the circle of life. And he's trying to help her understand what it means to have a circle of life. And of course, she messes up. She escapes. She goes out and she sneaks out because the babysitter's looking after her uh, really messed up and she went to the forbidden outlands and was in serious trouble. And we do that. Yeah? Amen? Yeah? Yeah? Only half by. Yeah? It's true. We all do it. Then there's another king. Anybody like to guess who it might be? No, you won't see him ahead of me. Here he goes. Who's this guy? Martin Luther King. I have a dream, he says. A million people are standing there that black, black kids, my black kids, could play with the little white kids in the street. 
And we think that's funny because we all sit here together with all sorts of color mixes in our church here. We have 34, I think 35 now, cultures in our congregation. But in America in those days, whites and blacks didn't even sit together. Whites and blacks never went to the same shop. And Martin Luther King stood there, and in the end he lost his life for it. But he stood for one reason, one reason alone. He was prepared to die for it. And that word was the word? Freedom. That word was the word? Freedom. And you've got it today. You've got it today. But I want to talk about traveling with another king. See, this king was kind of different in some ways. The cruise he did, he, 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 did, he did different. You see, one of the things that happened with this king, his kind of cruising uh, vehicle he rode on was what? A donkey. That's right. An ass. You see, he rode on the donkey, but he was still cruising, you see, because the guys that were with him, they didn't have a few things that we have. You think about this. They didn't have cars, rock music, petrol, iPods, power, hip-hop, but they were cruising. In fact, can I suggest that they were actually cruising better than us? Can we drop the lights? We're going to see another little piece here. Think about this. If you were one of the guys in the boat right at this moment, you see, there was something about Jesus, something that freaked these guys out because they knew about fishing and they laughed at him because he didn't know, but he said, just pull the net in now. And the net was full of fish, so much so it almost tore the net. And these guys were freaked because they knew something had happened way bigger than they'd ever seen before. They experienced one thing. They experienced the love that he gave. They experienced the power that he had. And in the end, they saw the heaven he went to. That's what happened. Can we get this young fella to stop chucking things down here? You see, the truth of the matter is, when we look at the whole deal, the Bible, way, way before Jesus, said these words. When God gives any man wealth and possessions and enables him to enjoy them, <coughs> to accept his lot and be happy in his work, this is a gift of God. Can somebody get me a glass of water? He seldom reflects on the days of his life because God keeps him full with a glad heart. You know the song that was being sung earlier, I'm happy? That's what it's really about. It's really about being much more contented than just living in the world that we live in today. It's much more powerful than that. You see, I reckon the other kings are okay to some degree, maybe not okay in some places, but I reckon it's worth living or going for the king. <coughs> it's worth going for the king. Why is it? Why do I think that? Here's a group of the guys here. Photo taken here a while ago. You heard some of them tell these stories tonight a little bit. You know, the truth of the matter is, you can do better. You can do better than what you've been doing. You can have better than what you've had. Let's give this man a hand. He's been giving us a great hand here tonight. You can do better. You can have better. <coughs> you can enjoy satisfaction. You can have joy. But one of the most powerful things you can have is community. You know, I've seen over, I've been here 20 years, just over. My daughters grew up here. We, some of you guys are sitting is where we slept and ate because we moved the house so we could make room to give you more seats. And uh, we lived here and we've seen people who have come here and they've lived here and says, we're going to get wealthy, we're going to get better houses, we're going to move to Whitby or we're going to move to Karori or we're going to move... And they move to these places, and quite often, not always, because sometimes they find a really good place to live, quite often some of them have come back. And the thing that they said was really revealing. This is what they said. The thing they missed was having people who were their neighbors who would say hello to them, who would be friends, who would be willing to come and sit with them and um, be part of each other's life. They missed that because they'd experienced it here. I want to tell you, God designed us for community, and that's one of the strengths of this place here. Amen? But he also is interested because sometimes community screws up, gets it wrong, messes up. He's also interested in doing something else for us. He's interested in giving us healing. 
He wants to take us. He wants to change us. He wants to transform us. He wants us to be people who are going to cruise with him because we know we're sorted out inside or we know we're fixed up. (coughs) He doesn't want us to live like without what we can have. He wants us to have the best. He wants us to know his power. And when the, when the guys were cruising around with Jesus, they knew his power. That fishing story was just one of many stories that happened to them. And I want to ask you a question. Do you want to live in the presence of the king? We're going to drop the lights because I've got another little movie slot here. I just want you to think. Some of you may be in a place where you're thinking, oh man, I'm not sure about this Jesus thing. And I, I've got to be honest with you, I was opposed to this Jesus thing even when a friend of mine prayed for me in front of my face and I rubbished him. I said, come on, you don't believe all that crap, do you? And I, that's what I said to him. But when he finished praying, he pointed his finger at me. He said, oh, see that prayer come true, don't you see? You wait and see. So let's have a look at this. There's one guy here, his name was Thomas, and he was having trouble just like some of you are having. Peace. Be with you. Thomas was a goner. He saw the marks. And he knew what he had to do. You see, the truth of the matter is, the words would have flooded through the minds of the believers at that point because he said, Jesus had said some words earlier, really powerful words. He said these words. He said, whoever lives and believes in me will never die. Now, you're going to say you've seen Christians die. Yeah, physically they die. But we go to be with Jesus. We go to a place which is called heaven. And as some people have tried to rubbish that, but I can tell you some stories of people I've been with who have been dying or have died. And one, on one occasion, a person who died and came back to life, he was, he was literally dead on the machines. He'd had a knife wound through here. Knife wound down and through here, but worst of all, he had one through the fontanelle center of his head, where the fontanelle and the baby is, had gone down to halfway through his, the depth of his nose, and he was dead. And they wanted the parents to take the body parts and give them to somebody else, and we anointed him with oil. And the story he told afterwards about his experience of his spirit leaving his body, and he's looking down, and he could tell us the things. You know, Jesus is real, resurrection's real. I, I have no doubt about it. I've met too many people who have experienced things, and I myself have experienced some very powerful things, including seeing things that some of you would probably be pretty spooked by. But God is real. The Spirit spirit is real. The spiritual is real. And life isn't just going to end here for any of us. It goes beyond. But there's a course which will lead us into heaven, and there's a course that will lead us to the other place. And I want us to think about this. Jesus, it's his home in heaven. Are we going to be people who are willing to fly the flag with him? Are we going to be people who are willing to do that? And I want to ask you, are you going to be cruising with the king? Because I reckon cruising with the king in heaven has got to be the best thing to do. Cruising on earth is pretty good with him. Cruising in heaven is incredible promises that are given to us. And he's called, uh, in the Bible, he's called the king of kings and the Lord (coughs) Lord of lords. been spending too much time with some of these young people yelling at them last night. (laughs) King of kings and Lord of lords. That's what he's called. And I want to ask you a question. Are you cruising with the king? And if you're not, why not? If you're just going to tell me because I'm enjoying what I'm doing right now, I can tell you now, that's pretty sad. You saw the guys in in the spa. They were hanging out in the spa, and they thought that having a party and getting drunk and not being able to remember the next day was great fun. Oh, that's idiot stuff. I lived in, 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 in the life. I never actually, alcohol never affected me like it did the rest of my family for some strange reason. I don't know why. When I became a Christian, things changed. And I, I decided after a while it's, it's, it's cool not to have to do some of the things that my mates were doing. And some of those guys didn't cope with it because they were pretty weak down under. I want to tell you this. People accuse Christians of being weak. But in actual fact, it's the other way around. It was easy for me before I became a Christian to cruise with everybody else. Because nobody would give you a hard time. Nobody would challenge you. Nobody would 
uh, uh, do all these nasty things that, that can happen to you as a Christian. But I can tell you what, I don't care what they did to me. And some of you know the story that's happened to me in the past. It's, you know, it's not a worry. Because I, I know, it doesn't matter what happens, even if I die today, I know where I'm going to be. I'm going to be cruising with the king in eternity. And that's the place I want to be. And I want to ask you, are you cruising with the king? And if you're not, what are you going to do about it? I'm going to do something tonight that we don't always do here. I'm going to make an invitation for people that would like to cruise with the king, and we're not going to hang this out. It's just going to be one invitation. You've got to come straight away. That's it. And there's going to be a group of people here that will come here and look after you and make sure you're cared for the future. Our young people, we've got three youth groups here called Blaze. And, uh, you know, they have a, an awesome time. You can see what they did here tonight. Why not cruise with the king? Why, why get messed up in all the wrong stuff? Why go down the wrong track? Parents often, uh, often think, you know, if only I can keep my kids good, I'll be all right. But actually, that's, that's not it. It's, it. There's more to life than that. There's more to life than that. So I'm going to invite you right now to all, to all of you that want to, to get out of your seats and come down the front. I'm going to have some people. They're going to be available. They're going to come down the front here. Some guys that are going to come and do that. Some people are going to have the courage to do that. So I'm, I'm going to get you right now to stand up. Everybody stand. The whole, everybody. I'm going to ask for some of our team members to come down the front here. Some of our leaders here. Come down quickly. We're going to ask some people if they want to, want to cruise with the king. If you want to cruise with the king, you come and be down here. Some of these guys are going to look after you if you want to cruise with the king. There's some guys already here. Amen. Let's give them a hand. Come on, having the courage. You just come and do it. I'm just going to finish with a prayer, and these guys are going to look after it. If you want to, if you want to cruise with the king, you come and talk with our guys. I'm just going to say a prayer first, though, before anybody else uh, comes down. And then we're going we're gonna to say you're free. Lord Jesus, we want to thank you for the, for the great team that did this, uh, put this uh, uh, concert on tonight, Lord. Lord, it was really good. It was excellent. And Lord, we ask that you help every one of us to face up to what you want. That you help us to be people that are going to cruise with you. They're going to uh, live with you. They're going to live in your power and going to be amazed just like the disciples were about the things that you do like some of us here have already experienced. So help us, we pray. Help us to, to, to get things right. And we're sorry because we've messed up sometimes. We haven't done things the right way. And we know that we need to say sorry to you, God, because there's no other way into heaven. And so we ask for your forgiveness. And we ask that you help us to be people that are going to be different, going to cruise with you and going to make a difference in this world, like Martin Luther King or, or like some of the guys that are here. In Jesus' mighty name. And they all said? Amen. And they all said? Amen. The Lord bless you. Let's give the team that's a tech team and that have been working tonight a big hand. <laughs>